I say it's gritty. That's the word I would use is grit. Um, I thought our kids fought, um, and we found a way. And that team in Baylor is – that team won 11 games. They were in a conference championship game a year ago. Um, they got several NFL players, um, and we helped them quite a bit in the first half. But our kids fought, and we found a way to win. And my hope is – now, we've got to continue to get better. We've got to get way better. Uh, offensively, but my hope is we can point back to this game in the second half and us finding a way to win and not lose, um, which is what I was talking about after the game at Oklahoma State. We found ways to lose that game. Here at home, we found a way to win, and I hope what we can do is we point back, we get this thing rolling, we can say, hey, they, this is the game, kind of figured it out. And we're in, in, in a contest where a lot of things went went wrong against a really good coach, a really well-coached team, a lot of returning players, um, and with a quarterback that just figured out how to win close games, you know, West Virginia found a way to win today. And so I hope that's the storyline uh, because I'm proud. Defensively, I want to start there. Uh, in our program, we talk about – in defense, we talk about takeaways, we talk about negative plays, sacks, tackles for loss, and we talk about red zone defense. Today, we won the game. We had several takeaways, played our tails off in the red zone, um, and then we created – we had six sacks, numerous tackles for a loss. Uh, sudden change, which we practice a lot, is put out the – offense put the ball, uh, turned the ball over, defense came out and, and immediately put it um, – got off the field or made them kick field goals. And so, you look at the stats, 27 rushing yards against a team that has two NFL running backs. Uh, six sacks, 11 t TFLs we already talked about. I thought Darius Stills – Played like the preseason hype he's he's been given, all right, and or he earned that. I don't want I don't want to use the word given. He earned the preseason uh, accolades, but thought he played extremely well. Tony Fields, you know, ten plus tackles. Uh, Josh Chandler, two TFLs. Alonzo Adal was big again today. Tyke Smith and and I thought Drayshawn Miller huge uh, interceptions. Um, I thought special teams wise, um, we flipped the field. I thought our coverage units were special. You know, you're talking about a kickoff return team that returned two for a touchdown last week. We tackled them inside the 25 every time. Uh, we flipped the field, made them fair catch. Um, our punt team did. I thought we were really good there. Uh, obviously, had the costly uh, mistake on punt return. And then offense, here's the deal. It wasn't good enough. Um, at times, it was, it was hard to watch, uh, extremely frustrating. Um, but here's what I'll say about this. In the second half, the offense didn't screw it up. Because it could have been screwed up, and the offense didn't screw it up, and it found ways to win. If you look at it and you go back, offense had the ball 46 minutes, all right? But here's where, here's where we figured out a way to win today, where we didn't find a way to win last week, is three for three on fourth down, okay? Red zone four for four, all right? And then if you look at our, at our, our second half scoring drive, okay? And I wish we were saying plural, but it was a drive. All right, we ran the ball eight times, and we figured out a way. We figured out a way um, to, to get it in the end zone, and I thought we played well in overtimes. You know, I thought for whatever reason, kind of relaxed and just played. But there's, there's a lot of – there's a lot of – got to clean up offensively. we got plenty of time to do it. Um, but gritty win overall, and with that, I'll, uh, I'll open it up for questions. First question will be from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Neil, you talk about those fourth down plays. Was that something that you sort of knew you were going to have to push that button going in and then talk specifically about the one in overtime on fourth and inches and going for it and then throwing out of that to Michael Lawson? Well, so we go in with a plan. Um, you know, data, data analytics, we, we play the numbers. I believe in it. I think it's proven that if you go for it on fourth down, um, you know, especially uh, in your plus territory, um, over the course of a uh, of a, a season, those those percentages play in your favor, um, and so we always are going to be aggressive on fourth down. Okay, I'll say that first and foremost. And then in overtime, if you look at the numbers, and this is something that was a little bit of an off season study uh, for me, is if you get the ball first, field goals do not win in overtime. And and you can look. There's there's numbers. There's a couple data companies we use. Field goals do not win in overtime. So we knew when we got the ball fourth and one there, um, you know, uh, Jared had a really good suggestion. I thought, and I'll say this too, I thought our offense staff was figuring out ways because we had, uh, you know, we got in some close formations because number eight, we had all kinds of trouble with him. 
we blocked them pretty well up front early. And then number eight and number two made about every single play. And so hats off to them, great players. Um, but the one on in, in overtime is we felt like we tried to run it up there a couple times on, on third and short. Um, one in particular, we had the ball third and four, and we were going to run it and then go for it on fourth down, and we got hit for a, for a tackle for a loss. And they were really in there squeezed, and they were jumping our cadence pretty good. Um, so we felt like we could throw it. It's, that's a play we like. Um, both those the that that play on fourth and one, and then the first play of the second overtime were naked plays. We felt pretty good about. And I know y'all been talking about tight ends. We wanted to um, wanted to get the tight ends the ball, which they should. When you run the ball decent, you need to throw your tight ends. And I thought, you know, I don't know how many they had total, but probably had six six or more between them. Next question is from John Antonic. Go ahead, John. I got two here, Coach. Um, first of all, um, just expand on what Darius Stills did because it looked like effort-wise he was really out there and then basically lining up in her backfield a lot. And then two, your first round, first down struggles on offense, that uh, uh, a component of the penalties and all of that. Yeah. So let's talk about the pot. Let's talk about the negative first, and I'll wrap up with the Darius being positive. So the negatives on first down. Um, we have we have figured we figured out a way in the first half in the first two drives in the second half to get in our own way about as good as you can possibly do it, okay? And it could be procedure penalties, it could be drop passes, it could be poor passes, it could be um, falling off on blocks, it could be bad play calls, all of the above. It went a, a, about as bad as it could go. All right, we started off with a good drive. I, we really felt good coming in. We had a good week of practice. People don't want to hear that. We had a good week of practice. Uh, first first drive of the game, we take it however many yards uh, down the field and uh, and and score. And then um, and then after that, um, after that we struggled. And, and it really wasn't it's and they're good on defense. So I'm not trying to, but we just we just got in our own way. Um, now, the positives on that were a year ago we would have never overcame that, okay? But we've talked a lot about, um, you know, stopping complaining and stopping the blame game and stop defending and stop excusing. You know, BCD is kind of what we talk about, blame, complain, defend, excuse. And where the growth is offensively is we figured it out really from the third drive on. Not all of them were scoring drives, okay, but we figured it out where we got some movement and we figure out ways, and we had some guys be really unselfish, um, and we were able to to move the ball, and we had a big scoring drive, and then we were able to put it in the end zone twice. Um, so we've got to get it cleaned up. You know, we'll we'll worry about that another day. I'm gonna I'm gonna be happy we won. Uh, Darius, I thought he's had two really good weeks of preparation. Okay, and so Darius has flashed on and off, and again in his career of on game day, he really has. Um, where we've been really pushing him, and, and Coach Leslie is the is the number one, and and Mike Joseph and and myself, where we've been really pushing him is 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 his preparation, taking care of his body, how he practices, and if he would do if he'll do that and really devote himself all week, not just on Saturday, if he'll devote himself all week on Saturday, then he'll be productive, and then at the end of this year he's going to get what he wants, which is an opportunity to play at the next level, and so for two weeks. He's done that. Uh, he was a captain for the game today, and it, that's voted on by our staff. And so to get that in that position, that means you're in a position of trust. And so um, – but I was proud of him. And he was emotional after the game. He was spent. He really was. And it, and when you invest that much, and and you're going to be a little emotional. So I'm proud of him. Okay, we'll go to Kevin Kinder. Coach, following up on Greg's question, you said rattled off all those analytic things really quickly. Do you know all of those uh, immediately? Is someone on the headset saying, hey, coach, here's the analytics for this situation? How's that process work? No, I, you know, I think about it from Thursday on. Just as far as, hey, we get to a certain yard line. If it's fourth and three or less, we're going to do this. If it's fourth and two or less. Now, predetermined, like, hey, if we get in fourth and one or less and it's an overtime and we get the ball first, man, we're going. Okay, that's – that, that's a, that's a decision. You don't you can't just make those in the game. You gotta those are things that you put thought process in, and because if it didn't go right, I might have to come in here and defend it right. And so, um, but I just believe in it. I believe in it. If even if it didn't go our way, 
I just – field goals don't win in overtime. Next is from Cody Nesper. Uh, Neil, I have a two-parter here. One, um, you already mentioned Bernard. Do you think having that impact middle linebacker is just kind of a necessity in the modern game? And two, do you think Tony Fields is turning into that for you? I think they're both very similar players. And if I was, if they were both would walk in this room, you know, I don't know if they would, they would be what you would call prototypical Mike linebackers. But what they are are Mike linebackers in today's game. I mean, those guys can run. Um, they, they really, both of those guys, talking about Bernard, who I have a ton of respect for, and Tony Fields, who, uh, who I'm proud he's on our team, I can tell you that, is they're difficult to block. And the thing about those guys, they can play out of the box because that's where number two hurt us a lot, out of the box. Um, so, and Tony can do the same. They can play out of the box. They can play in the box. They do a good job taking on blocks and running around because they run well enough. They can drop in coverage. I mean, what about the play number two made? People are going to forget about it, okay? And and I'm sure Daigle will get beat up because he threw a pick. Um, but you talk about an unbelievable play. Bernard made an unbelievable play on that second turnover we had in the first half. He jumps up. Tips it, catches himself on his back. That was an unbelievable play. Um, but I think those guys are very similar. I think they're NFL players, and I think they're difficult. Um, they're difficult to play against because in both schemes they move around a lot. Next question is from Matthew Thurnsbury. Hey, Coach, going off of that, um, you know, can you just talk about what Tony, Tony Fields brings to the game? Um, you know, I just seemed like he was all over the field tonight. Yeah, he's experienced. Um, he really is. He's experienced, played in a lot of big games. Um, got a calmness about him. He does really he, – he's always cognizant of, of how young we are and what kind of example he's setting. And, and I appreciate that because um, we're, we're in building mode, okay? I'm, I'm not, like, we're better than we were a year ago, but we're still we're – we're not exactly where we want to be either, okay? I think that was evident at times today. So – and – and I was open about him once he went into the portal during the recruiting process. I was like, listen, we need a playmaker, but we also need somebody – I call them train stoppers, okay? And, and that, came, that term came from our women's basketball coach, Shanda Rigby at Troy, did a, did a hell of a job, okay? But she talked to our team in 16 when we were turning that thing around in Troy, and she talked about these train stoppers. And these trains, they keep rolling, and something's got to stop it. Either a break or you got to put something out in front of it to stop these trains. And I told Tony, and I said, hey, listen, we need a train stopper. We need somebody when things are going bad that they can answer the call to adversity and, some, and somebody that can show our young football players how to respond to adversity. And so I told him, I said, listen, we, 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 we need you to come in and make plays, but we also need somebody that we can point to and say, hey, this is, this is how you react. This is how you prepare. And he's done that for us. And his on-the-field play has been tremendous, but – uh, for the last three weeks plus, you know, his off-the-field contributions have been as big, big, very big for us as well. We'll take these last three questions in the queue. Go ahead, Chris Anderson. Hey, Coach. I was here about uh, the first, say, quarter of the of, uh, game for offensive play calling. You have scripted plays, whether it's a drive or 20 plays, 30 plays. Do you do that? And if so, at what point today – did that kind of cut off? Because you mentioned the first yeah. drive was so well and then, you know, kind of downhill after that. Well, so we scripted the first six and we scripted the first couple third downs. So, um, and we tried to go back to that script two different times. Uh, and you can watch it. And we tried to go right back because that's something that's that's pretty common. If you have success on the opening drive, at some point if you get a little slowed down or bogged down, you'll go back to that. We tried to do it two different times. Uh, and we just – we didn't do a very good job of executing. Um, once we, we turned the ball over three times and I thought our defense was doing a really good job of controlling the run game. Um, you know, we went into halftime and said, Hey, listen, um, we're going to have to score at least one more time, maybe two, but what we can't do is we, we get, this has got to be a field position game. And I said, let's, let's figure out how we can, cause what was happening was they were bringing, those guys were really well coached. Okay. And, and they got a pretty good idea about what our weaknesses are. All right, so they were really condensing the edges on us, things that we'd had success with Letty in the first two weeks because we were different running the football than we were a year ago. 
Uh, so they were really condensing the edges. So we we went back and said, okay, what are some things we can do that maybe we had not game plan wise, but it's not going to put a whole bunch of different things on a quarterback. It's not going to put a whole bunch of different things on our offensive line, and we can execute and we can try to eliminate those edge players. Um, and we did that. And, and like I said, it's it wasn't a thing of beauty, but offensively we didn't lose the game. And so, and and sometimes in these games you got to do it. And you know, Big 12's changing a little bit. Um, last week was kind of a, a grinded out game that we found ways to lose. This week we found ways to win. And, uh, you know, it's not always going to be like that. We're, the offense is going to have to bail out the defense at some point. Uh, today it was the other, other way around. Um, but a lot of credit to our offensive guys for, for regrouping, um, not getting down, uh, and finding a way to put the ball in the end zone twice in overtime. Next question is from Mike Kazaza. Yeah, how's it going? I'm worn out, Mike. I feel like I played. Yeah, me too, believe it or not. I want to ask you about your receivers. Um, what do you think of your outside guys today based on the challenges that you put forth this week for them? And then Wheaton had probably not his best day and ends up with a, a pretty sizable play at the end. And the fact that he's on the field still and makes that play probably speaks to, to your faith in him. Yeah, so – I think when players are young is you've got to be really careful how you handle them, okay? And probably the the best analogy I've been watching playoff baseball, just because a pitcher gets hit a little bit, if you know he's going to be a, a pitcher that's going to be in your in your organization for a long time, you don't, you're not necessarily going to just pull him. And so that's kind of the way I think about it with our team in all areas is we talk about faith, we talk about trust, and in having faith in one another and having trust and and I think that you you got to you got to be really careful you know now if somebody's not getting the job done you got to put somebody else in that's getting it that can get it done but for a young player once that that trust or belief or whatever goes away it's really hard for them to overcome and so I always want to be a coach that that our players understand that I'm going to have their back and I believe them and uh and so that's what we did today, and it worked out. Now we got to get better, and if we can't play any better, then we're gonna have to get some other people in. But um, I'm not a big proponent of doing it right in the game. That's just my own personal philosophy. Um, uh, I think there's growth there. Um, Bryce is a long way from being a finished product. You know, he's six four, two hundred twenty pounds. He runs really well, um, but he's he's still learning how to play. He didn't play a lot last year. Came on at the end, played some. Um, today wasn't his best day, but I'll say again, growth. You know, he showed growth. A year ago, I wouldn't have been able to find him. He'd been over on the bench on the sideline somewhere. Today he's in the huddle. And let me tell you that you know, he had to play on the punt, you know, on our punt return, you know, which I can't really explain, but it happened. And uh, so I'll own it. But he overcame that too, came back and, and made a difficult catch uh, in the end zone there on the, uh, on the touch, first touchdown in, in overtime. And so, proud of him. As far as a receiver group, we got to play better. Um, ball hit the ground too many times. We had drops. Um, we got to help the quarterback, you know. But I will say this. We put them in a position where they had to really block. You know, we got in those condensed formations, and they had to block number eight. And they got it done. And, Sam, we'll go to you for a final question. Go ahead, Sam. Sam on, if you muted. Go ahead, Sam. You guys Sam. hear me? Yeah, we got you, Sam. Oh, sorry about that, Coach. No, you're you good. mentioned uh, Darius obviously breaking out earlier today. Um, with, uh, I believe he had two and a half sacks. But the overall, the team had six with 11 TFL. It really seemed like you guys were owning the box. What did you guys think of – or what did you think of your guys' defensive line play and how critical was it to win? Yeah, I was I was really pleased with our defense overall. You know, I thought that Coach Leslie and Coach Adai uh, had a, did a tremendous job with the game plan coming in. Um, it felt like they had a good plan. You know, Brewer's hard to play against because he does – he ad-libs and makes plays with his feet. Um, and those two running backs, they use them in a bunch of different ways. 
So, but I thought our game plan was 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 really good. I thought that our D line, we played several of them, and some of those guys, you know, played a couple of true freshmen in there. Um, Quay Mays gave us some really good snaps, um, and so I really thought our front seven played well. We gave up a few passes, but we also made a, made several plays in the pass game. So, overall, pleased with them. You know, we won we won a game of defense special teams, didn't screw it up on offense, and uh, hey, we're gonna take it. Like I said, we're not gonna apologize. Thought our team was gritty. Um, we'll we'll uh, we'll worry about all the negative stuff. We'll clean it up during the bye week and be ready to go for Kansas. All right, thank y'all.